space time, the sun and the moon, physical objects, everything that we see inside of space and time is just our visualization tool. The reality we're interacting with is nothing like the visualization tool. There's nothing like space and time. We've made the rookie mistake of assuming that our headset, VR, our visualization tool, is the final reality. It's just a rookie mistake. It's, so, it's like someone who's played Grand Theft Auto so long, they have no idea there's a reality besides Grand Theft Auto. We're like that right now. If you just look at your face in the mirror, if you look, what you see directly is just skin, hair, and eyes. That's all, that's all you see. And if you looked inside, if someone opened your skull up and looked, you'd just see neurons and, and so forth. But what you know firsthand that you cannot see is your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, your love of music, your, your mood. It's all in the VR experience. No physical object, including my body, is conscious. Strictly speaking, my brain isn't conscious because my brain, in fact, doesn't even exist unless I render it. Right? So if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, I'm playing a VR version of I got the steering wheel in front of me. I'm holding the steering wheel. If I look to the side, I no longer render the steering wheel and there is no steering wheel. It's, when I look here, I render it and now there is a steering wheel. The same thing is true, strictly speaking, of neurons and brains. They're there when you render them. They're not there when you don't. It's a VR system that you render objects in space and time as you need them because they're part of your visualization tool. And then you garbage collect them. You delete them when you don't need them. Your life and my life right now is we're in a simulator, a space-time simulator. And we've been given, like an AI system, we've been given certain intrinsic desires. So my wife is an artist. So there's billions of humans and there are billions of different ways that we explore in music, in art, in literature, in science, various kinds of science, meditation. So we're at sports. There, there are all sorts of ways that consciousness is exploring through us. And there is not like one is the best. I don't know what we're doing outside of space and time. That's part of what I want to understand is what are we actually doing? We don't see, I don't know what I'm actually doing. I know what I'm doing under a description. I, like I'm moving my hand right now. And if I grab a steering wheel in my car, I know what I'm doing under a space time description, but I don't know in ultimate reality what I'm really doing. It's just like the VR player, when they turn the steering wheel in Grand Theft Auto, they know what they're doing in the language of the game, I'm turning a steering wheel. But what they're really doing in terms of the supercomputer, right, which in that metaphor would be the deeper reality, they're toggling voltages and magnetic fields and circuits that they have no idea. There's, there's probably trillions of voltage togglings going on for one turn of the wheel. All they see is a turn of the wheel, that's their notion of cause and effect. It's trivial. The real cause and effect is trillions of voltages getting toggled in fractions of a second. It's much, much more complicated. So when I talk evolution, I'm only going to be talking about assuming the headset. Now I'm within the framework of the headset because evolutionary theory is only a headset theory. It's not a theory of consciousness beyond space and time. Consciousness is like a kid in a candy store. It's a never-ending exploration that is, in principle, never-ending. We call Tom and Don are just parts of this overall exploration of, of consciousness and all of its possibilities. Our little bit that we're exploring right now, um, as rich as it seems to us, is trivial compared to all the possibilities that Gödel says are out there. I can imagine a square, I can imagine a cube. Now, go up one more dimension. Imagine a cube in four dimensions. My brain halts and my mind catches on fire. Nothing happens. That's only four dimensions. I can't even go to four dimensions. I mean, how, that, that, that's terrible. It's, it's just an incredible limitation. I can only see three dimensions of color, red, green dimension, blue, yellow, and, and so forth. There are some pigeons who, that have four color receptors. Presumably they're in an extra dimension of color that I can't even imagine what it's like. Can you imagine a specific color you've never seen before? As rich as our worlds seem, we know that there's a rich possibility of conscious experiences that we can't even concretely imagine. But consciousness itself 
on this theory is exploring all these possibilities. And right now we're sort of stuck on this little headset, three dimensions, small amount of color that we can see and so forth. Just, it, I mean, we thought it was the whole world. No, it's just, it's a little headset. It's a, it's a prism. My imagination is stuck in only three dimensions. My colors are stuck in a certain range. Now here's the challenge. Suppose we chase that down. So we say, okay, there's going to be this ongoing dynamics of consciousness constantly going beyond what it knows. But there's going to be a, a, a dark side to it because going into the unknown means letting go of what you know. And that can be terrifying. Where literally you don't have concepts. All of your current concepts are inadequate. For those who meditate, I mean, when you go into silence, it's both healing and terrifying, right? If you really let go of all thoughts you, and go into the void, it's, it's sort of, it can be scary. Like you want to go back into, you, you grab back onto your, it's a life jacket, right? You're, you grab onto your teddy bear, your thoughts. How would consciousness precisely, this, this vast social network, project mathematically into space time? Clearly there's a projection. I'm interacting with Tom's consciousness. I'm not seeing that consciousness. I'm seeing skin, hair, and eyes. I'm seeing a space-time projection. I'm not actually seeing your emotions. I'm not seeing your mood. But I am genuinely interacting with your experiences. It's a genuine interaction. And so there is a projection from this conscious realm into space-time. We can take what we understand in the headset and pull it backwards. If we can project from consciousness to the headset, then we can try at least to go from the headset and pull backwards. It's, it's, it's a fallible enterprise, but it may help us to open our minds to the possibilities for deeper theories of what's going on outside the headset. So, so the reason I'm doing this is because I, I can't even imagine a specific color that I've never seen before. I can't imagine in four dimensions. In other words, I take it as a given that I'm deeply deeply limited in my imagination. And I need all the tools I can get to help me step outside of my headset and try to guess the unfathomable outside of there.